Hi, this is Captain Mike here with you again on uh, another uh, video, uh, this time about candle wax. Uh, I wish I could make a, a video about all the different kinds of waxes and all of the things that uh, go into them to make them what they are, but unfortunately that's really impossible. So I'm going to sort of just hit on uh, the basics of types of candle wax and what I have learned about them over the few years that I've been making candles. Uh, when I first started making candles, it was like everything else. Um, I probably was online then, we didn't have YouTube, but I probably got on the internet and dug around a little bit about whatever kind of wax to use. And uh, I ran down to a dollar store or wherever and I picked up some household paraffin wax. And that's the first thing I made candles out of. Now, I only mention this because it will work. However, at $3.50 a pound today, you're not gonna use much of this for making candles. But you can if you want to, okay? Uh, the uh, first type of candle that I ever made was a, uh, a pillar candle. And I made it in some kind of a homemade mold. And uh, it progressed on until uh, they got fancier and fancier. Now, pillar candle wax is just standard wax. It comes in all sorts of forms, but me, I bought 50 pounds of it, and it come in big slabs like this. It's really hard, and uh, it uh, has a pretty high melting point. Uh, I use it as, as it is. I didn't add any additives to it, but there are all kinds of additives that you can add to your waxes, all the waxes I'm gonna talk about. Uh, and you can get online and find out what they are. I won't bore you with all the different types of additives to make the wax to do different things. This is standard uh, pillar wax. It's hard. It makes a very hard candle that will stand upright, just like this. And uh, if you use the proper wick, it will burn down. Uh, it won't tunnel too bad. It'll wax will run off the edges and stuff, and so you need to have it on stand. But it will burn right on down. You can color it. You can put scent in it. You can do whatever. Uh, the um, this ultimately led uh, led to me making cake candles, which is a uh, you'll take one of these and you will whip with a blender. You'll whip up very hot liquid wax. And then you'll take it with a uh, with a knife like you would do a cake, and you put it all over it, and it looks like cake frosting on it. Maybe I'll get around to doing a video on one of those. I don't have any of them anymore. I haven't done them in many years. But this is a pillar candle. You make it in using this kind of a mold. Has a hole there. You stick the the wick through it, and put some tape over it. Turn it upside down pour the wax into it, and uh, of course you have to have a way to hold this so that it'll stay upright, but you can. This is another pillar mold, and it will stand upright on its own. Same way, it has a hole in the bottom of it. Put the wick through it, tape it. You'll have to hold the wick straight up and keep, keep it straight while it cools, but you'll pour the, the pillar wax in there. And that is a pillar candle. The only wax I know of that's harder than this, and I'll probably get some people to disagree with me, but in my uh, um, experience, beeswax is harder. And I know because I have lots of beeswax. And I mold it up in these cute little things like this, but uh, uh, it's harder. And I made some of these, uh, which is a container candle, but it actually is uh, a container candle, well actually it's not a container candle, it, it was made in a container, uh, but it's it's regular wax like this. I poured it and then I took this, held it by the, the uh, wick, and I dipped it in a container of liquid melted beeswax several times, like you do a tallow candle, until it formed this beeswax uh, shell about a little over a sixteenth of an inch thick, make it as thin as you want to, or as thick as you want to. Then I just cut this little hole out here, pulled it off so that it would melt. It will actually melt this down and uh, leave this shell 
and it glows. It looks really nice, but uh, that was just one of the things that I done. And like I said, beeswax is, you can make the whole candle out of beeswax. You can buy it. I don't have to buy it, but you can. It's expensive. Uh, and that's one of the things that you can do with it. So, I went from pillar candles to container candles, and I first bought wax-based, a paraffin-based container wax, uh, and I used that for a, a long time, and uh, until I discovered uh, uh, soy wax, which is made out of soy oil, uh, and that's what I use now. It comes in these nice little flakes. It has a lower melting point than the pillar wax. And uh, it takes color well and it uh, also uh, takes fragrance well. And you can, you can use almost anything for a container. As if you watched an earlier video I done, I use a lot of fruit jars. You buy these, especially during the year when the gardens come in. Dollar General has these, and all kinds of stores have these things. You can buy them. They're about $8 a dozen. Maybe a little cheaper if you get them. Uh, this is a cute little bee one here that I made. Uh, and that's normally how I do it. However, I have uh, lots and lots and lots of old candle containers. I uh, don't have one. You can even use, uh, well, actually, it's almost anything that, that will not melt. You can use for a container candle. And that's... That is the, oh, the wax I use for that. Now, the third kind of wax that you can use is this stuff. And it's gel wax. I do not know what it's made out of. I got on a gel wax kick one time. It, it's a container wax. You have to put it in a container. It colors well. It holds scent well. Uh, and it melts pretty easily. Uh, those are the pluses on this. Uh, you can take the, uh, I meant to do one for this video, and I may do one and somehow edit it in, but uh, you melt this stuff and you, you beat it really good with a whisk and beat air into it so it has bubbles, and you pour it into a champagne glass or a wine glass or whatever you want to pour it into, and the bubbles don't quite make it to the top, so it looks like a, a, a glass of wine with the bubbles in it. It's really neat. Uh, what I don't like about gel wax is um, it's a little on the, not say sticky side, but it attracts dust. If you have a container like this sitting out on display, you need to put something over it if you're not using it because the dust will stick to it. And after a while, it looks really grungy and bad. And the other thing I don't like about gel wax is it has a tendency to soot and some fragrances inhibit the melting of it. Uh, there's one or two that I did that um, uh, just wouldn't hardly burn at all. So you have to experiment heavily with the gel wax. Uh, I got about 30 pounds of this junk left. Uh, not knocking it, I don't like it. You may love it. It has a lot of artistic applications, and I, you know, if you can buy a small amount, try it. Uh, that covers the different kinds of waxes, but you need to mention wicks. Uh, all of these wicks take different types. I mean, all these wax take different types of wicks, uh, depending on the diameter of the candle, the type of wax it is, container or pillar, and how much fragrance you put in it. And you you have to experiment heavily with all the candles that you buy, that you make, unless somebody gives you a great recipe. And then I still suggest you do it. Now. Uh, this is a, uh, I think is an HTP 1212, and this is an HTP 104. You may or you may not can see the differences in the diameters. This one is much thicker than this one, okay? You can get them different diameters. This works great, this HTP 104 works great in a candle like this. In a, in a container candle using standard soy wax, it will burn uh, all the way down and it will leave very little residue on the sides of the jar. It burns very good. For a heavier candle, you'd want to use this. When you get into the great big candles, uh, like this one was before it got all burnt up, 
this big one, you can see it had like four wicks in it. And uh, you have to put the, 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 the right number of wicks and the size of wicks in them, or they don't burn down properly. Actually, this one, crappy as it looks, was a pretty successful burn for somebody. I don't know who made this candle. I didn't make it. They just gave me the, the residue. Uh, but it burnt down very nicely, and they, they got their money's worth out of it. Um, but I save, I, I use these, and then I, of course I put them in these jars, and whenever the, the wax is solidified, I cut off the extra and I save it. The reason I do that is I buy these little things here, and you'll stick that in there like that. And when you squeeze it with a pair of needle nose pliers, you squeeze it together, it looks like that. It works great in small stuff. I have some tins and all that I used, and it, it works great in tins or anything that's long enough to put it in. So you don't waste anything, don't throw anything away. And of course this is, uh, is just bulk can't, uh, uh, wick that I use in, in pillar candles. You'll cut off what you want, you'll put it through the hole, and it, it works for that. It comes in different sizes too. And you'll have to do your homework. Most of the sites, I know Kentucky Candle, if they're still in business, had a good website at one time, and they would tell you all about, you know, what it was, what was suggested, what wick was suggested for what wax. Uh, and the only, I don't have much left in this video, but a couple of other things I want to touch on. The other type source for wax is scrap wax. And these are some examples of scrap wax. And what I done here is I took all of these candles. Every time I go to a yard sale, somebody have a bunch of old candles, uh, they would sell them to me for little or nothing or friends and relatives to save all their old candles from weddings or whatever and you separate them by color and I used an old ice cream uh, churn, it's aluminum, but uh, you can use whatever you want to use that will work and that's what I made this, this big thing here out of and I just, just to get it out of the way, if I wanted to, to use some of it I just cut off a chunk and weigh it and whatever to make a certain candle. But it come right out. Of, it come right out of this, and uh, you know that's just a great way to do it. You can use lesser things. You can use solo cups. They're good for other, you know, other things rather than drinking Jack Daniels out of. Uh, boom! You just it makes a great little mold. You pour whatever you want in there, and it pops out, and you've got a, you know, something you can store to use later. Um, the last thing that I'll talk about is silicone molds for making uh, tarts and uh, you need to buy you one of these at Walmart because what I find these are great for whenever you're doing the soy candles uh, you have leftover um, wax and you don't know what to do with it it's not enough to make you know one out of or you want to make the whole thing full you know it makes great you know, tarts. Uh, and so you just pour it all full of that and, and uh, you know, if you want to make tarts too, you have, a, you have a little wax left over, add a little extra scent to it and tarts work really great that way. Uh, and then of course you can get different kind of molds for tarts, but this is what I keep handy when I'm making candles and I have extra stuff. I just pour it in there. Now there's a lot more to candles and candle wax than I touched on here. But hopefully this will give you an idea on the kind of molds that you'll need for pillar candles and that you'll need for container candles, the kind of wax that you'll need for pillar candles and container candles, and what you can do with beeswax. And, uh, you know, just experiment with it. It's, it, it's, uh, it's really great fun. and. Uh, uh, I hope you enjoy uh, making candles, and if there's anything that I can uh, help you with, please add it in the comments below, and I'll try to get back to you and answer your question. If you have suggestions, let me know. Uh, I'm Captain Mike, and I appreciate you watching my video. Thank you.